Thank you very much for watching our symposium, Interplays Between Theory and Experiment in Digital Neuroscience. I'd like to thank the Chain Institute for their support on this symposium. The two key processes in decision making are assigning values to different actions or options and choosing the best action among them. Decision making has been studied in many different fields of science, including economics, psychology, and artificial intelligence. This symposium features four speakers who are working in intersections between these fields. The first two talks are about reinforcement learning theories or how the animal learns values. I will present our work studying the relationship between dopamine and traditional reinforcement learning theory called temporal difference learning. Will Dabune will discuss a novel reinforcement learning algorithm called distributional reinforcement learning developed in artificial intelligence. The next two talks are on choice mechanisms or how the animals make a choice based on values. Christine Constantinople will discuss her studies in rats applying a very influential theory in behavior economics called the prospect theory. Paul Grimshaw will then discuss a normative perspective on choice behaviors starting from efficient coding all the way up to the prospect theory. Now let me move on to my talk. Dopamine neurons are located in the midbrain nuclei called the ventral tegmental area and the sub nigra pass compactor and send long axons to wide area of the brain. One of the influential ideas in the field is that dopamine neurons signal reward prediction errors or the difference between the actual and predicted reward. When the animal receives a reward surprisingly, dopamine neurons exhibit a transient excitation. After the monkey knows that a certain stimulus predicts a reward, then their response to reward is greatly diminished. And the response shifts to the cue that predicts reward. Um, and um, when the predicted reward is omitted, then dopamine neurons decrease the activity below baseline. From these observations, it was proposed that dopamine neurons signal reward prediction error or the difference between actual and expected reward. This is a simple model of decision making. The brain assigns value to different actions or options. And based on this representation of values, the animal chooses the best action. At the same time, the predicted value can be compared with the actual value that the animal received. When the discrepancy is detected, then the brain can use this prediction error signal to update the value representation. By repeating this process many times, the value representation gets refined and the decision making gets better. A large body of evidence supports that dopamine neurons signal reward prediction errors and substantiate reinforcement learning in the brain. However, there are still many controversies in the field. One of such issues is called ramping dopamine. In many experimental conditions between the Q and reward, the firing rate of dopamine neurons is typically flat, staying at the baseline level. However, recent studies have shown that this is not always the case. In this experiment, they measured the concentration of dopamine in the ventromedial striatum using cyclic bed voltammetry while rats performed in a TMAs task. They observed that dopamine concentrations gradually increased while rats approached the goal. This study proposed that this prolonged dopamine activity might signal pro proximity and the value of distant rewards and drive motivation to perform. Similar ramping signals were observed in a simple decision-making task. In this task, the uh, animal chose left or right response ports based on uh, probability of reward associated with the two ports. 
A ramping dopamine signal was observed before the animal received the feedback about reward. In this study, again, they proposed that dopamine signals the uh, value of future rewards as illustrated in this figure. The value of future reward gradually goes up as the animal gets closer to reward. This gradual increase in value may correspond to this dopamine signal. In a more recent paper, they compared the spiking activity of dopamine neurons and the dopamine concentrations at the axons. Spiking activity was measured electrophysiologically from the VTA, and the dopamine concentration was measured using a genetically encoded dopamine sensor in the ventral striatum. The signal looked very different at the glance, especially the spiking activity appears to lack slow fluctuations that are prominent in dopamine dynamics. And they concluded that there is a dissociation between the spiking activity and dopamine dynamics at the axon terminals. From these observations, they proposed that these slow dynamics are generated primarily at axons independent from the somatic spiking activities. Another interesting study used two photon calcium imaging from single dopamine neurons in the VTA. Head fixed mice performed a Q integration task in a T maze. The authors uh, analyzed the uh, data using regressions. They analyzed what variables are correlated with calcium signals of each neuron. They considered various variables, including various task events, such as the appearance of a cue or reward. A whole, uh, whole, whole trial variables such as performance, accuracy, and previous reward. And continuous variables such as position, speed, acceleration, and these kinematics variables. They found that each neuron was strongly affected by a specific variable such as position, speed, acceleration, view angle, Q, accuracy, and previous reward. They also observed that almost all of the neurons were strongly activated by reward. For today's talk, what is relevant is this position-related activities. Individual dopamine neurons showed a positive ramp or negative ramp as a function of the position in the teammates. These studies showed that dopamine signals sometimes ramp up, raising some questions. First, does dopamine represent a prediction error or something else, such as value or position? And second, under what conditions does dopamine ramp? So what is reward prediction errors? Reward prediction error here is defined by the difference between actual and expected reward. More precisely, a reward prediction error can be defined by this equation. This type of prediction error is called a temporal difference error because this contains difference between values of a consecutive time point, t and t plus one, combined with reward at time t. Here is an intuitive way to understand TD errors. In a simple classical conditioning paradigm, when the cue is presented, the value goes up because the animal now knows that a reward is coming. The value goes down when the reward passes beyond the time of reward because now the animal does not know when the next reward is going to come. V of t plus one is just one time step shifted version of V of t. Because V of t plus one goes up earlier than V of t, taking the difference will result in a transient increase and decrease. And gamma is typically very close to one. And this is approximately the derivative of value. When the animal receives a reward, the excitation from reward cancels this dip. Combining these three terms, we obtain TD errors which approximates all the three features of dopamine responses in classical conditioning, Q evoked response, and reduction of reward response when reward is expected 
and dopamine dip when predicted drug is omitted. The important point relevant to the, today's talk is that TD error is about approximately the derivative of, of value function. TD errors and values are related, but fundamentally different variables. A derivative like computation is an essential property of TD error and originates in the initial studies by Sutton and Barto. And concerning this derivative like property of TD errors, Sam Gershman pointed out that the shape of the value function matters. If the value function is an exponential decay function, computing TD errors using the, this value function will res result in zero TD error. What if the value function takes a different shape? For example, if the value function is more convex than exponential decay function, computing TD error can result in a positive or even ramping up TD error. Therefore, just by observing a dopamine ramp, it is unclear whether we are observing a value function or a TD error that is the derivative of a sufficiently convex value function. So a dopamine ramp can occur regardless of whether dopamine represents RPE or state value. We therefore sought to develop a set of experiments to separate these two possibilities. We wanted to do so with less assumptions basing on the original definition of TD error, that is the derivative-like property. Imagine that a mouse moves in a linear track to obtain a reward and mouse is suddenly teleported to a new location. Let's assume that the, uh, there is a monotonically increasing value function across space. When the mouse is teleported from here to here, the value suddenly increases. This will result in a step-like increase in value. In contrast, teleport will cause a transient response in TD error because it is the derivative. Another in important uh, prediction is that the value should be always maximum at the goal location because the animal received the same reward right now. This does not need to be the case for TD error and the peak can exceed the maximum point in the standard condition. This manipulation therefore makes qualitatively distinct predictions for value and TD error. To conduct these tests, we use the virtual reality in head fixed mice. Mice were presented with the uh, scene passively and received reward at the final location. Run here. We first measured the activity of dopamine neurons using fiber fluorometry or photometry. A calcium indicator GCAMP6 was expressed in dopamine neurons and axonal calcium, calcium signals were monitored through an optical fiber inserted in the ventral striatum. After training, calcium signals indeed showed ramping activity before the reward delivery. In the first experiment, we introduced three conditions, a long teleport, short teleport, and pausing at the same location. The value will show a step-like increase, whereas TD error will exhibit a transient response. The magnitude of these responses will be larger for long than short teleport. When the animal pauses for a short period, the value may stay constant, whereas TD error may decrease back to the baseline since there is no change of value in time. Here is the result from 11 mice. This is the average of the standard condition. Here is the response to a short teleport and a long teleport. Teleport caused transient responses and the peak of the response well exceeded the peak of the standard condition. This result directly violates the state value hypothesis in which the value should be always maximum just before uh, reward. A pause caused the ramp to disappear and the signal dropped 
back to the baseline. And these results are consistent with regard prediction error and some results strongly violated the state value account. We next performed speed manipulations. If the dopamine signal is the temporal derivative of value as predicted from TD errors, then it should be sensitive to the speed of the scene movement. Compared to the standard condition, the, the slow speed resulted in weaker runs and faster speed resulted in a greater run. These results are difficult to explain by the value hypothesis as it predicts that the value should be uh, the same at the goal location. Instead, these results are consistent with the idea that dopamine activities encode TD error or the temporal derivative of a spatial value function. What about spiking activities? To address this question, we recorded the spiking activity of optogenetically identified dopamine neurons in the VTA. Here is the activity of an example neuron. We observed a small but significant increase before reward, as evident from denser spikes around here in the raster plot. This small run was observed also in the average population activity. At the glance, this ramping appears to be very small compared to the uh, transient response and reward. However, if we convolve this spiking activity with the slow kernel reflecting the slowness of the calcium signals, the appearance of these signals become much closer to the axonal calcium signals. The ramping activity becomes more evident and transient activity gets de-emphasized. We then asked whether ramping and transient responses are observed within a single neuron as predicted by the model. Using uh, fluorometry signals, it is difficult to exclude the possibility that there are separate populations that signal either ramps or transients. And this is a neuron that uh, showed ramping up spiking activity, which is more clearly seen in the convolved plot or predicted calcium signals. This neuron showed transient excitation at the time of teleport. Although the population average ramped up, we found that the activity of some dopamine neurons ramped down. Interestingly, those dopamine neurons that showed a negative ramp also showed a transient response at the time of teleport, a signature of reward prediction error. Therefore, regardless of whether the activity ramps up or down, single neuron activities were consistent with reward prediction errors. It is interesting to note that these positive and negative ramps have been observed at the single neuron level in the previous imaging study from the Wittgen lab. As I mentioned earlier, a positive ramp can result from a more convex value function. And similarly, a less convex value function can result in a TD error that ramps down. The derivative-like computation can provide a unifying account of this type of diversity observed in single neuron activities. These experiments show that the spike, spiking activity ramps up and potentially explains ramping signals observed in axonal calcium signals. The reason for apparent discrepancy may be due to the difference in fast and slow measurements. If this was true, somatic calcium signals should also exhibit ramping signals. Indeed, calcium signals measured at the soma of dopamine neurons showed ramping signals consistent with TD errors. TD error is the derivative of value. TD, if, if this is the case, TD errors could be potentially converted back to value by temporarily integrating TD error for a long time scale. We next asked whether dopamine signals become closer to value than RPE, potentially due to its slowness. We used a genetically encoded dopamine sensor, GrabDA, generously provided by Dr. Yulon Lee. Dopamine signals measured in this method were still more consistent with reward prediction errors. 
So this conversion does not occur even in the dopamine dynamics. We next examine whether we can simplify the task. We use the horizontal bar that moves from the top to the bottom. And we gave water reward when the bar reached a certain position on the screen. Even in this task, which eliminates navigational component, we observe the gradual run of dopamine response. We further tested the nature of ramping by performing teleport, pause, and speed manipulation in this task. As you can see, dopamine ramp ramping uh, caused by a moving bar conformed the same critical predictions of TD error as in the navigational task. One question that you might have at this point is whether the signals that we observe are just a sensory surprise. To address this question, we performed teleports between two different trucks. While running in one truck, mice were teleported to another truck occasionally. If dopamine neurons respond to a sensory surprise or sensory prediction error, we should see a response. But we did not see such a response. And as a control, we performed a forward teleport with the same animals which evoked a big response, as in this uh, result. We also performed a backward teleport. Backward teleport causes a sensory surprise, but causes a decrease rather than an increase of value. If dopamine represents a pure a sensory surprise, we should see a transient excitation similar to uh, forward teleport. However, the calcium signal rather decreased after backward teleport, likely reflecting a decrease in value. Finally, we changed the magnitude of reward in blocks of trials. The trials leading to big reward resulted in a larger run in a standard condition, and a larger uh, transient excitation at the time of teleport. Therefore, both the ramp and transient response were scaled by the value of upcoming reward. These responses cannot be explained by a pure sensory surprise. In summary, ramping uh, uh, activities occur at all the stages of dopamine transmission from spikes at soma to dopamine concentration at terminals. Ramping dopamine signals in the ventral striatum can be explained parsimoniously by temporal difference reward prediction errors. We also showed that dynamic sensory cues indicating reward proximity, including navigational stimuli or simple moving bar, can cause ramping dopamine signals highlighting the importance of sensory feedback that indicates transitions over states. Whether these ideas can be extended to more wider conditions remains to be clarified in the future. However, we speculate that even in the absence of external cues, a sequence of actions that leads to reward can act as an internal cue for state transitions or the proximity to reward, which may in turn cause dopamine responses. Some of the dopamine ramps observed during instrumental responding may be explained by this. Finally, dopamine neurons compute derivative-like prediction error signals on a moment-by-moment -moment -moment basis. This moment-by-moment -moment computation of deriv derivative-like signals is the hallmark of temporal difference error signals to our knowledge our experiment is the first empirical demonstration of this idea and unifies the computational interpretation of dopamine signals across time scales. So what is the difference between our study and the previous studies? First of all, it is nice that the data largely agree between the studies. Our data suggests that the apparent correlations between dopamine and position and speed can arise from the derivative-like property of TD errors. In other words, some of the variations in dopamine signals can be explained as variations in TD errors or reward prediction errors. The approach of the previous studies 
uh, is data driven, considering all the variables that can be measured or defined relatively easily. So regression analysis used all the observable uh, variables. However, the value and TD errors are latent or hidden variables without the theoretical consideration. These variables might not appear purely from uh, the data driven uh, analysis. So George Box is, the, is a statistician uh, and he famously said that all models are wrong. Since all models are wrong, the scientist cannot obtain a correct one by excessive elaboration. On the contrary, following Wickham of, uh, William of Ockham, he should seek an economical description of natural phenomena, just as the ability to devise simple but evocative models is the signature of the great scientist. So over elaboration and over parameterization is often the mark of mediocrity. But he says that there are useful models. For example, this is the ideal gas law, and everyone knows that none of the real gas uh, follows uh, exactly this equation. However, this equation captures the essence of how the gas should behave. He then says that for such a model, there is no need to ask the question, uh, is the model true? If truth is to be the whole truth, the answer must be no. The only question of interest is, is the model illuminating uh, and useful? And I would argue that temporal difference error model is highly illuminating uh, in, in order to cap, uh, capture uh, how the dopamine system works. And I'd like to thank the people who did the work. Hyungu Kim did uh, all, uh, was, was involved in all the experiment. Uh, Tha Malik did electrophysiological recording and Polpec uh, helped uh, many experiments. And this work is a collaboration uh, with Sam Gershman and his student, John Michael, who made important contributions on the theory aspect. Thank you very much for your attention.